So you want to draw Spider-Man? But there are so many, your artistic spider sense is tingling. No worries, let's go over the most iconic Spider-Man versions and how to draw them. Steve Ditko drew him first, and the style in the first few issues is a little dated now. But Ditko progressed quickly and made awesome art like this after a few dozen issues. But the true old school Spider-Man in my book is John Romita Seniors. The one on the lunch boxes and bed sheets in the 60s. And if Tony Stark would have one on his t-shirt, it would be that one. Here's some classic poses. And in this one we can see the proportions. Head is 1 8 crutch in the middle and a pelvis about the size of the head. Pretty realistic, just that the legs are maybe a little higher. Part of what makes Romita so good is his masterful shading. The way to ink shadow. I would divide it in three ways. One is the classic feathering off of a stroke, like here in the pecs. Next, also feathering, but kind of free in space. They can be long as well for drawing larger shadows. And since the lines go from thin to thick, they kind of merge into each other at the end. Then number three is a drop shadow. Sometimes a very sharp outline like here, but the difference is that one and two are used to show the shape of a muscle, but this number three is where one part of the body casts a shadow on another part of the body, which means you'll have to define where the light source is. For example, if the light would come from the top in this one, there would be a cast shadow on the leg. And these spaced out lines I would still add to the second style since they are free hatches but just spaced out a bit further. Okay, let's come up with a pose for the classic Spider-Man. No. How about running at us? That's more of a John Romita Jr. thing. Okay, how about crawling up a wall? Yep, feels classic. Dress up the stick figure with shapes. And here I noticed that back in the old days they didn't really define the triceps as much as they do now. It's almost as if the biceps continued diagonally into the triceps. So let's do that as well. Okay, getting there. I have the light coming from the top, so I can cast arm shadows on both legs. Okay, inking time. The outline is quite thick in this period. And it has to look like a brush, so making sure not to start and end the line too thick. I can still change the line from the pencils, so giving him a bit bigger Romita shoulders. Also the leg a bit more out in. And the eyes are very specific, so staying close to the reference. All's fair in love and war and comic book homage drawing. The line of the costume pattern is much thinner than the outline and also making sure to have the same amount of web rows on the mask. The belt is exactly two rows. Then coloring on a separate layer underneath. Those primary colors really pop, but now it needs the hatching. So adding the one, two and three type shadows. The shadow on the wall is pretty tricky, so uh, let's leave that out for the comparison. Number one, Lunchbox Spider-Man. Then the year was 1984. Enter Black Suit Spider-Man, masterfully drawn by Mike Sek. Now, there's two ways to go with the black suit. Mike Sek does style A. In comics, black is represented as blue because black is used for the shadows. Like when they draw black hair for Wolverine, it's actually blue. 
If you draw the outline of the body, define which muscle goes in front of which one, and then outline the edges of the muscles. And then you have the choice to keep those outlines or erase them. I erase them in this case because I like it better, it has that clean look. And also notice that I drop the highlights only on the left side. Sometimes they drop it around the whole body and that works well when the background is dark or it could represent light coming from the back or front. Now for version B of the black suit is what Rick Leonardi, Arthur Adams and Todd McFarlane were good at. It shows more of the muscles with thinner lines and uh, created that spandex feeling that turned into the 1990s muscle chart heroes. So in the sketching it helps to outline every muscle. Then trace them in blue, though I wouldn't connect all the lines, just keeping space between them and even editing them to be thinner and a bit rough works well I think. Right, let's draw some cool poses in those two ways. This pose was a first try lucky punch. So yeah, outline the whole body first. Then decide where to drop the highlight. And where the body parts overlap, you definitely need the outline. Then fill it with black and just add the spider. Clean up the lines a bit and done! I love me some 80s black suit highlight Spider-Man. On to B. Let's go for a wall clinging pose on this one. Okay. This time I drew the lines in black first. Then added a black shape layer in the back and on a copy of the inks I added a mask which I filled with blue. Merge the mask but then the outside is blue as well so just delete the outside. It might feel like a few unnecessary steps but I think this works faster than having to decide between black and blue in the inking phase. And then in the end still edit those blue lines to give them that strange crisp feeling. Which makes it a lot cooler all of a sudden. Okay, welcome to the group. Black suit Roid Spandex Spider-Man. Which leads us to the biggest shift in Spider-Man history. The man, the myth, the legend, Todd McFarlane. Like he said himself, adding more webs in the pattern, bigger eyes and spaghetti webbing with that one strand going all the way around. Not the first one to do it, but he sure did it best. But the biggest change was the way he drew the web slinging poses, which Eric Larson and Mark Bagley happily continued after him, more like an actual spider. Knees almost always above the head and very arched spines. Okay, let's do it. Let's try. Quite tricky to exaggerate, but still look graceful. But yes, this shows promise. Just that back leg looks a bit weird, so yeah, put it up. And since this is Spider-Man, not Catman, let's move his head a bit further up. 
For the shadows, he uses feathering in the highlights and uh, patches of parallel lines. I did this McFarlane Spider-Man a couple of years ago and the legs didn't look good in retrospect. So let's study. I honestly think that McFarlane partly wings it when it comes to the leg muscles, but let's analyze. In this case, this is the shape. And I think the point is not to have a too obvious pattern. So overlapping ovals and erasing most of the lines. That's why mine here looks a bit off too clearly defined and too much of the line remaining. So yeah, that's better. Let's tighten it up, not leaving it to chance this time. That includes the hands. Also the inking is quite innovative. So no longer the thick outline, but much thinner to the point where there's spaces in between. A color and onto the webbing, which took forever and I didn't even get as tight as he does. Okay, spaghetti webbing. The main one is three strands and then one looping around it over under over under not that difficult but it just takes time and in the back one i kept it to two strands and pretty loose inking but still looks okay i think okay last touch the yellow highlight just put a mask over the color layer and wow hats off to the innovator mcfarlane so there we have it 20th century Spider-Man history. And if you ask me, 80s black suit rules. Of course, after that came innovators like Humberto Ramos. I made a video about his style in the 100 artist challenge. And also videos on Charles Vess, so Mark Bagley Carnage, and many others. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments which Spider-Man rules in your case. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video and catch you next time.